Welcome back. While horror-oriented console games are usually dominated by zombies, there have been exceptions like Silent Hill and another title from last year, Parasite Eve. Well, the sequel to the game has arrived in Japan, and we got an early look at this next chapter of biological terror. The original Parasite Eve was an attempt to blend a role-play game with action-adventure elements that many found to be an unsuccessful hybrid. The sequel will, for the most part, dispense with the majority of the RPG elements to focus on the action-adventure elements, bringing it more in line with the Resident Evil series. The sequel takes place shortly after the end of the first, with you still playing Aya and the world still in the grip of an epidemic that causes people's mitochondria to awaken with a vengeance and die, or, you guessed it, mutate into something more interesting to look at. The game once again uses pre-rendered backgrounds, but with an impressive amount of detail. As to be expected, the drama in the game is brought forth through the use of very intriguing camera angles. The battles in the game are now in real time, and you'll typically see your enemies before you have to engage them in combat. Switching targets will be controlled by the square button. Firing the weapons will be controlled by the right shoulder buttons, offering primary and secondary attack options. There are no longer levels to gain, but experience points can be earned to unlock the parasite energy powers. Aya can also earn bounty points from killing enemies, which can then be traded in at convenient locations for armor or weaponry. The game will also feature multiple endings and new modes once completed. Though to enjoy that, it'll need to arrive here in the States, which should happen sometime this year. There's definitely something about sequels this week. Our next review is the sequel to Mario Party, one of a handful of third-party games for the N64 last year that used characters from Nintendo's stable. So, is it another reason to invite friends over for root beer and graham crackers? Let's find out. The sequel to Mario Party doesn't change the fundamentals of the original, but it's an attempt to improve upon what players liked about the original and trim back on what they didn't, and it's more than a partial success. The original and the sequel are the video game equivalent of board games, where players take turns rolling dice to move on the playing field. The object is to earn as many stars and coins as you can. The board is spotted with random characters that can help or hinder you in your quest. But it can get more complicated when you can acquire items for additional rolls of the dice or when you hire a boo to steal coins from an opponent. This, mixed with other random elements, keeps the game in a good state of flux. But the heart of the game are the mini-games. They occur at the end of every round and at other special times. The mini-games involve keeping a chain chomp from waking up or collecting coins thrown by a hammer brother. Sometimes you work with other players, but usually it's every man for themselves. Mario Party 2 has 40 new mini-games, with two dozen returning from the original, and gladly, the most annoying ones have stayed away. While some of the less favorite are still here, there are enough games that you don't have to play them all that often. Other nice changes are practice rounds for the mini-games so you can figure out what to do, and duel bouts between players who have landed on the same space. But in the end, the best part of the game are the mini-games, which you won't get sick of, giving the game way more replay value. And since the game's all about replay, that's good news. Joe Fielder from VideoGames.com gives it a 7.8 out of 10. Ambition is good in most cases, and this next game is definitely a testament to ambition. It's D2 for the Dreamcast, and it's already available in Japan. So we ran over there and picked up a copy to show you this upcoming title. D2 was originally conceived and partly developed for the ill-fated 3DO M2 console system, and it's now been in the works for over three years and has just recently been released to Japanese consumers. The two in the title would imply that it's a sequel, though it only bears a resemblance to its predecessor by holding on to the main protagonist, Laura. The game is an attempt to blend CG, full-motion video, real-time third-person adventure, and first-person shooters into one game. The game begins with Lara aboard a plane high above the Canadian mountains. Unfortunately, it gets hijacked, which causes a disruption. But things aren't over yet because there's a meteorite that blows a hole through one of the wings, making it crash. Then Lara finds herself in a frozen Canadian expanse with unpleasant beasties making things difficult for her. 
The game uses ample FMV sequences, interspersed with third-person perspective exploration using a Resident Evil-style control, and there's first-person combat. Battles occur randomly as you progress through the game, and you cannot move or strafe in combat and must keep the creatures in view using the X and B buttons, and then firing with the X. The game is very much driven by the story and is spread over four discs, so prepare for D2's chill when it arrives later this year. Gotta watch that miracle grow. Well, if you want to check out the D2 preview again, it's up on our website, along with all the other previews from this week's show. And while you're at our site, you may want to let us know what upcoming title you just can't wait to get your hands on. D2, Seaman, Metal Fatigue? You can argue your case with other gamers on the GameSpot TV message boards. Coming up on GameSpot TV, we revisit a rather bizarre title from Japan that's more of a science experiment than a game. And we go to Quake School to become masters in the art of the frag. Bring your Twitcher finger and your brain for our advanced Quake 3 Arena strategy guide.